Hi, this is Sarah from sarayip.com with your February 2023 forecast. Better late than never. <laughs> Better here than not, right? Um, so it's really big energy, a bit like my hair. They say your hair is like your personality and mine is very untamable. So I'm going to say that's a good thing in my line of work. Um, let's talk about the energies. Uh, let's get you a bit of a healing vibes uh, for this moment in time. So if you enjoy this video, please comment below. Uh, 999 love would be a great code, bring in lots of fantastic energy for you. So I'll be doing a little bit of reading and a little bit of improv today. So we are in a seven universal year that comes from 2023 added up. That means all of us are collectively healing our crown our inner and outer king, queen, and angelic self, our sense of wholeness um, and completion. As you can see, it is the end of the visible and the blending with the invisible. It's a lot about trust. Big word there. So with it being the second month of the year, seven plus two is nine. And so we have this really interesting combination, two odd numbers, seven and nine, both looking at each other, wondering about the meaning of life. It's a very philosophical month. Um, so the main themes you'll probably find, conclusions, surrender, big picture, charity. You'll probably find also uh, a lot of travel or, or like moving on. Uh, the nine always brings that sense of rewriting history, um, basically contributing uh, just to the greater good. And it's a lot about claiming rewards. So I feel like there's a lot to enjoy. What's really interesting is energetically the year begins in March. So we are just really tidying up and I've certainly been caught up in that. The last couple of weeks has also been a lot of celebration for us with birthdays. So what else do you need to know? Um, don't stress if you feel like you're still recovering, you have a little bit of like jet lag from 2022. Although 2022 felt like a grind for a lot of us being that clearing of the third eye, um, which is a lot about mental health and also just mindset. You'd be amazed actually what a different person you are after that experience. Um, 2022 was a lot about realizing um, basically where you buy into, uh, you know, an addiction to figures, to outer success, to um, approval seeking and really stunning to come back into your true self. So what else is happening? Look, just in general, the seven energy, as you can see, it looks like a lightning strike or a, a cliff that you jump off. It's sort of about like quite sudden, perhaps at times extreme um, movements. Uh, I love that kind of thing. You may feel a little anxious, but all I can say is just keep breathing. <laughs> so a lot of people will be experiencing uh, detours this year, especially where perhaps they've had their head, head in the sand. You could experience changes in your social circles, you know, where people have just been putting up with each other and then they realize they're really on very different pages. Seven is also the energy of books and learning and awakening. So um, for some of you who would like more resources, like actual tools, I have finally released my 2023 forecast kit. It's pretty interesting. So it's actually six hours of insights, not only about the world, what I'm expecting to happen. Um, it's got a very heavy focus on sevens, as you can imagine. But there's also uh, predictions for each life path. So from one to nine, and then we include the 11, 22, 33, 44 life paths within that. And each of those life paths also has its own custom meditation based on animal totems and basically energy frequency. So that's something you can use all year round to help yourself um, and you can find the link below and it's uh, now on sale for half price. Okay, so what else to know? Let's show you the cards for the month and the year. Now, some of these might look familiar. So for the year, we've got that uh, chariot card. This is the Paulina Tarot, which I love. Um, and it's very much about succeeding despite intense obstacles and that's this year. And then we've also got that other thematic card, the tower. Don't be too scared. This is really about stepping out of things which um, hurt you, you know, getting out of your head back down to earth. When I lost my voice during the first recording of the 2023 forecast, we had actually just been discussing this. So then I pulled the card from my deck of why I was having this experience and 
of, of losing my voice in public and it came back and there was a bit of spirit laughter. Um, and look, sometimes that's just how we learn. We learn in public and we learn awkwardly. As a scientist, I, I kind of embrace that. I try to actually use it um, to assist myself and others. I feel like there's a lot of good that can come from just being really open and working through things together. Okay, other cards for this month. So we've got the hermit. I know some of you probably do feel like hiding for a while. It's not a bad idea, especially um, during this waning moon period. Um, and there's something here about also just finding your own guiding star again, finding your own light, um, doing things that make you happy at a very deep level. They may not even be expensive. Like for me, I've just gone back to reading books. My husband bought me a whole bunch of Mills and Boone. And for some reason that is um, hilarious and it's sort of just like a little bit of release. Sometimes it's really hard to always be trying to, you know, do things so extravagantly and it's nice to just do something that's a bit like Monday. Uh, the other card that could be at play here is the moon. I wanted to make a, a statement here. So Chris and I actually uh, teach tarot combined with numerology. In fact, we're doing a call in a few minutes in Patreon. I think it's really important that we question everything especially, you know, like a lot of the resources we use in spirituality were developed a long time ago, almost or all of them were developed um, by people who may or may not have realised they had an agenda. I think it's really interesting that we often see the sun card as this super positive, everything's going to be okay type of card. And the moon is like, uh -uh, you know, beware, illusions, deceit. It's a bit strange. I mean, if you look up my articles, for example, on 666, which is about the goddess, you know, it looks like a pregnancy and it's very much about women's wisdom. I just think sometimes, uh, like I said, we just need to question things. And of course, that's why I encourage people to make their own decks and also to have a variety of decks. But for now, it's still a very useful language and look, it's a very commonly accepted card. But I think just, you know, take it with a little bit of skepticism because times change. And I actually love the moon. If you're an 1111 star seat, it's very good to go moon bathing, in fact. Anyway, so what does it mean? It means there is that river to cross, which can be um, some sort of subconscious blocks, uh, maybe even just like a fear of freedom. I know I've been working with a lot of my clients and my world changer coaching clients on this. And it's kind of like the secrets and the taboos that we don't talk about. And we know, may not realize the kind of shackling us to our past. Uh, and it's like really getting some support uh, to look at those and to break them apart. Very often, uh, the reason you are stuck is not just your own decision or energy. There's often quite a lot of peer pressure at play, whether those people are alive or not alive. And it can take uh, the frequency of a group or a really focused healing session to actually dislodge those things and that's okay and that's normal okay what else uh, a few other things that I feel like have been coming up as themes the biggest one is um that time is parallel not just linear so especially if you see 11 11 it's a little bit like mirrors within mirrors and it's reminding us that we can actually go backwards and forwards through time to help ourselves. There's different techniques to do that. I generally do it through um, visualization meditations with my clients. Um, you can also do it through, for example, uh, past life regressions or recall, kinesiology, lots of things. So what's the point of being able to do that? Well, it's a lot more fun than just sitting there waiting for the future. And it's not that you don't accept the now and you don't enjoy what's in front of you, but it's also that sense of like using all your faculties and really um, like showing others not to be afraid also of their spiritual gifts. So what's an example of this? Mm, I'll just think of some recent ones. For example, uh, I've worked with maybe 60 or 70 property developers in the last few months. And uh, for example, they might have a house that's not selling. So, you know, you can do all the just normal logical things, obviously put it on the market, get a good real estate agent, you know, really say goodbye to the house. And most of the time that does work. But every now and then there's just something deeper at play. And so, for example, you could get a land and property healing. Uh, for me, I might do something where we actually hand it over to the next owners. Uh, we work uh, basically at just a broader level 
And there's just been some really amazing results from that. Another example, for example, uh, let me think, uh, you know, if someone's going into court, we could preemptively do some energy clearing of that situation. We could place everybody in bubbles. We could have soul conversations just to hopefully make it go a bit smoother. Now, all these techniques are not spooky. They're actually very straightforward. A lot of entrepreneurs, athletes, politicians, they use things like this all the time. They might just call it something different. But it's essentially um, setting the tone for your reality. Okay, what else? So this obviously is a huge year for anyone who is a seven life path. Definitely check out my forecast. Check out some of my um, blogs on sevens at seriup.com. It's also huge if you have sevens elsewhere in your chart. For example, a lot of sevens in your date of birth. Um, or you might see 777 or codes like 717. Uh, these are all signs that you have a very active crown chakra. This is a year where you'll be in high demand. Now, there is also a minor aspect to this, which is in February. You'll probably find that your number nines, uh, also known as the old souls or the global thinkers, they will also perhaps be having a lot of shifts. Um, the feedback I've been getting, I mean, I have two life path nines as children, but also a lot of clients who give me this information. Um, the other nines are feeling like things are a bit intense. And I guess that makes sense because we're literally ending 2022. And also nines, the number gives you an idea of where they tend to uh, resist. And so nines often have some sort of drama or challenges around really finally moving on. And often there's something here about the fear of death or an uncertainty about starting again. And this is where spirituality, um, meditation, and even just, um, you know, being in the company of positive people makes huge, huge difference. So I have a saying, if your number nine comes to you for help, drop everything, answer their call. Because these are the types of people often, they might ask uh, once in like every few years or even maybe once a lifetime. So it's worth paying attention. I have actually had a lot of energy from, for some reason, um, Steve Irwin. I've been researching him and his family for a few years now. And I just uh, finished rereading this book by Bob Irwin, who is a nine life path. He's the one who started the original Australia Zoo with his wife, Lynn. And it's interesting, his grandson, Robert, who's named after him, is also a nine. And that's why I love family numerology. There's so much beauty and forgiveness in it. So, yeah, one thing I was getting from uh, Bob's book is, you know, life is really there to be claimed. And if you hold back, really the only person you're hurting is yourself because everybody else can sense it, whether they're psychic or not. People know if you're not all in. I think it's like an inbuilt survival instinct we're given. And love is all in. Okay, last few things for this forecast. So we have already passed the full moon. That was on the 5th and the 6th of February, which is when we'd like to bring things to a head. We're just coming up to Valentine's Day, yay. Um, look, I'm a big romantic. I uh, met my husband on TV reading his palms for a segment called How to Read Your Lover's Palms, talk about co-creation. And uh, look, I love love. And you can find plenty of blogs on my site about soulmate, uh, marriage and relationship lines in palmistry there's like a palmistry class you can buy there um yeah it's it's my thing I love love so I really do wish that you have a day there where you can um, embrace yourself and your situation whatever it is and then we have the new moon on the 19th and 20th of February just in time for my son Ziggy's birthday and this is a time to rest and reset so if you've enjoyed this remember put a comment below 999 love um, I'd love to meet you. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can join our Patreon community group, which is really affordable, 11 22 or $33 a month. There's no contracts. It's 10% off if you pay in advance. Um, also, obviously, I do readings and I have some higher level coaching programs. So thank you for listening. I hope that you found this interesting. This is my life's work. It's what I do day in, day out. Um, I do forecasts for a living and I create those video um, snippets basically to pass on what I'm experiencing, hopefully to help you and uh, just to make the world a much kinder place. 
So thank you so much for following and I look forward to hearing back from you. Bye, until next time.